welcome along to a brand new season at Brian and Hove Albion, a brand new season for Seagull Central, and that means a brand new season for the Adam McDonald View. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and welcome along. We are back. We are back for another season in the Premier League, but starting off in pre-season. I hope you well. I hope you had a good summer. I hope you enjoyed the Euros, whoever you were supporting, and uh, you're ready to go again. So much change at the club in the last kind of two months since I last spoke to you in a formal podcast setting like this, and so much to get into. Brand new manager, brand new kit, so many new signings, looking so interesting going into this new season, and I, for one, am so excited. So whether you're in your kind of first, maybe five, ten years supporting the club, whether you've been supporting the club your whole life, you know, we're talking five, six decades, you know, welcome along to the show. We're all on this ride together. It's been absolutely unbelievable these last few years and it feels like whatever happens this season, we're going to be really entertained from what, from well, firstly, from what going off what I've seen today and also just generally the way this journey is, you know what it's like as a Brighton fan by now. There's There's always something to talk about and the story's so interesting for good or for bad. So I'm um, so excited just to really be back and be yeah, heading into another season. Um, you know, so, so much to get into, you know, it's been weird. It's been a couple of months since I kind of, kind of did one of these. And we've obviously had the Euros, we've had, we've had De Zerbi leaving, we've had Hertzler appointed. Uh, in my line of work, working for a sports broadcaster, kind of working all summer on the Euros, my mind has been so focused away from from kind of club affairs and it's been really nice actually to to have a um a game essentially today to talk about to watch and really get into and kind of relight that fire after kind of a, f- a few weeks a few months away from club football it's quite interesting <laughs> as soon as England lost the final of the Euros I remember being a little bit down and the Monday morning came about and I saw I started going back on the BHAFC kind of hashtag on Twitter this is what it's all about again, isn't it? You know, getting back stuck into club football. And I was able to kind of put that all behind me quite quickly, the disappointment, the disappointment of the national team. And we're back into club affairs. So it's so, so good. And, and thank you for being with me today. So I want to get into the new appointment of Fabian Herzler, but I mainly want to talk about the game today. Obviously taking on um, Kashima Randlers today, beating them 5-1 in a pre-season friendly Really, really good positive signs that we can get into. Um, and then generally, just so I'll make a little comment about kind of what's to come over the next few weeks, the next few months, what my plans are with this podcast and and how we can get excited, you know, and what we need to be maybe looking out for kind of going into this new season as Bryant fans. I'd love you to get involved. If you're if you at all invested in this, you know, this podcast so far by watching, commenting, viewing, subscribing doing whatever you've done, please, please continue that. I thank you so much for that. Share this with whoever you can. Drop a comment below. Get involved. It really helps me. And uh, I, yeah, I love kind of seeing seeing you guys get involved. It really means a lot to me. So let's get into the game. So Brian, in the first preseason friendly out in Japan, which is obviously such a massive deal for Brian fans, going abroad, you know, not for the first time, but doing one of these big, big tours like we did in America last year and obviously we're doing it in Japan. It's a real statement of that step up from the club, you know, doing these tours essentially, okay, of course, to kind of spread the kind of uh, the fan base around the world, but really for commercial reasons, to kind of help sponsors, to build that wider fan base. And it's felt like there's something that's been coming for a while ever since Matoma's come to the club and we've seen that real influx of of obviously Japanese fans coming into Brighton. So it's really interesting that we're out there. It looks like it's absolutely roasting out there at the moment. But yeah, re, uh, yeah a pre-season friendly today, Kashima Antlers. Brighton, at, at the end of the day, they were pretty dominant in that game, beating them 5-1. And I think we've got some really good, interesting talking points to talk about this. First of all, like, I think we should say, I was I was quite want, interested to see what the difference in style would be between De Zerbi and, say, Herzler and... Obviously, Herzl has spoken a lot about that desire to play a similar way to how De Zerbi does. But I think seeing seeing in action, admittedly, it's only a first preseason friendly. We don't get much of a picture for that. But it seems like we've already got a bit of an idea of how he's he's going to be setting up his team. Um, he was playing a, a, a four at the back, which is obviously not too dissimilar to what De Zerbi's done. De Zerbi's obviously changed to a three at times last season. I think Hertzler is the kind of manager he'll do that. You saw his Sao Paulo team wasn't playing a four for a lot of the time. So I wondered whether that will change when we have kind of players coming back. Obviously, we were without players like Lewis Dunk, Eagle, etc. at the back. Um, 
but setting up in a way where I think we're a lot more direct, and yes, it's only one game, but we look a lot more direct. One of the things that I struggled with a little bit with Zerbi was that kind of press baiting was brilliant, but it, it did mean we knocked the ball about the back quite pointlessly a lot. And yes, this is only one game in a friendly, but I think the players look quite sharp and you could see that intention to get the ball forward really quickly, either through the midfield lines, I think particularly in the first half through players like Moran, um, and the second half, like Ayeri, even Milner was kind of good at doing that, receiving the ball and popping it forward quite immediately. Or kind of from the goalkeeper and Jason Still, who wasn't afraid to lump it long, or, or even the players from the back, kind of um, you know floating it in behind. And I felt like we were really trying to get in behind quite a lot. Danny Welbeck dropping into deeper spaces, a bit like you've sometimes seen Harry Kane doing, and then kind of playing balls through into wingers. You, we saw a lot of that, and it felt to me like. There was a bit more purpose to kind of our attacking and it felt a little bit, little bit more direct and purposeful. Now, it'll be interesting to see how and if that at all changes over, you know, the course of the season as we kind of get players back into the proper cut and thrust of pre-season and whether we see that go into a Premier League season, whether that is a stylistic change and to what extent, you know, that press baiting that we saw under De Zerbi is going to be a uh, a key factor within Hertzler's system. I think it'll be yeah, that will be really interesting because we definitely, you know, we Hertz is coming into a team where he already he currently has the players to kind of essentially play that same style of football. Whatever style of football he's planning on playing, we have the technical players to do that. That's the way the club is run. A coach can come in and they can come out. But I'm going to be interested to see the tweaks. We've seen it already. I think, you know, the fact that we've brought in an attack now, which is really bolstered, looking really lively, looking really dynamic and direct and pacey. That's been really well bolstered. And I think that might also change the way we play. Of course, De Zerbi was very focused on getting wingers into the game a lot and getting them to run at players. It seems like that's going to be, um, you know, a, a, an aspect of how Hertzler wants to play as well. But those wingers today in, the, in this friendly, they were so, so important. You know, of course, in the first half, you know, Minter was unbelievable. Um, you, you saw, I think I think the thing that interested me was just the fact that they felt like just off the ball as well as on the ball, they were really getting stuck in. Particularly, I'm thinking in that first half, Minter, you know, wanting to get back, wanting to get stuck in, wanting to get into the tackles. Players like Osman, who I think, you know, obviously probably is a bit versatile across the, the front three, four players, but it looked like he was playing a kind of a 10 role or kind of supporting Danny Welbeck. Um with, with, you know, not, not necessarily playing on the left or the right. But it feels like we've got players who, off the ball, are going to really put a shift in. And that's something I've really liked. I think with Minta, it's, a, it's such a cool one, that deal, because 33 million quid, 30 million quid, that, that does sound like a lot. And that, of course, that is a lot for Brian. That's loads and loads of money. Um, but you can kind of see it already that the the ability that he has to beat a man, to want to take a man on and to finish, it feels like he's really accomplished. Now, of course, for his goal, you know, ultimately there were loads of players just kind of not really doing anything by the end of it. And he did have loads of space to run through. And I guess the quality there, you could argue, but the way he was able, ha happy to receive the ball on that left foot and just go bang past the player, bang past another player, and then slot it in. It felt like that directness that we've been missing. It felt like something that we have seen a little bit in players like Solly March in the past, but we've 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 seen less of that, you know, towards the end of last season when we were having to play kind of makeshift players out wide and really push through the kind of Simon Adingras, who's probably naturally on the left, having to play on the right. So that was a really, really kind of nice thing to see. Uh, in terms of how how our maybe attack is developing, and we were obviously told, you know, uh, throughout last season via reports that that Tony Bloom and Brighton were planning on having a pretty pretty big summer and an impactful summer, and it feels like that already. You know, when you watch the videos of Brighton landing in Japan and you you see the kind of lineups and stuff, it felt like when I was watching it and watching the players out in the team hotel and stuff, it felt like there were a lot of players that. Not that I didn't recognise, but kind of I don't feel that real familiarity with. And obviously that's because we've got a lot of players who've been out on loan coming back and uh but 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 also lots of new signings, you know, Wafer, um Cozy Ajubri, Osman, Minte, you know, there there are lots already, plus the players coming back like Ayeri, who we haven't really seen loads of and 
Moran, who we've obviously heard a lot about via Blackburn fans, but we've never really seen loads of that in the first team. So it's been quite interesting to see a real cohort of what seemed to feel like new players coming in. I think that's really interesting because I have felt like for maybe the best part of a season or so that there's been a little bit of, not dead weight, that's way too hard to say, but but you know players that I felt like were maybe in a bit of a, a kind of transitional period as we'd been building out that team and, and bolstering the quality and as the club have been able to kind of take things to the next level in terms of spending, in terms of style of transfers, as you saw with kind of Jao Pedro coming in, Minta coming in, Osman coming in for these kind of 30 million style prices. It felt like we maybe have been transitioning. You know, we had a Pedro come in, but we've still kind of got a Welbeck or a, or a Webster in the side. Not saying they should be got rid of, but it feels like this summer there's been a real overhaul of those players and we're getting a real new batch of in. You know, you compare this side to the one that, you know, Deserby would have taken on when he started in the space of just under two years. And it's actually very, very different now. Um, so I think that's something I found really interesting. I think if we go to the players, the new players that we saw, obviously the standout styles would be, you know, Cozy Adjubri and, and, and Minter. I think those two really, really impressed. I mean, Cozy Adjubri, you know, they talk about him being the kind of the Saka kind of replica in that Arsenal Academy. And the fact that essentially Saka was in his position made him made the club and made him feel like he didn't have a future at the club. Um, Brighton have taken him and, and it looks to be like a really fabulous signing. Now, I think my initial thought would be, oh, well, this lands for the academy. I think it quickly transpired from reports that it's not for the academy. He's going to be there supporting the first team. Whether he can make that jump up into the Premier League immediately, who knows? Obviously, the level we were playing at to get today in Japan you know, is not Premier League standard. However, he looked like the kind of player who, when he gets the ball, he wants to attack and he wants to shoot. And we saw that, you know, two goals from him with his left foot, essentially the same finish twice. over. So you really did see that kind of Saka style to him, which is so talked about. The trouble is, we've got so many good players now in these attacking positions that the question is, how on earth are we going to fit this, you know, all these players in? I guess the good thing is we've got at least two players in every position, sometimes three players in each position. And it means, as we saw last season, I think the lessons that we could take from that were maybe we needed a bigger squad and maybe the kind of depth that we had wasn't as strong as we would have liked, particularly when you take into account Europe and the injuries. When we lost a player like Matomo, okay, we were bringing in someone like a Dingra who was fantastic, but probably wasn't quite acclimatised. When we lose someone like March, we're then having to really stretch players like a Dingra, getting Buena Notte out wide. And I think now that we really have, you know, um, proper wingers in proper winger positions that aren't centre mids going out wide, you know, we're able to really, really focus our style of play. And I think Hurtler will absolutely benefit from that. And I think it's just that it's that it's what we were talking about that development that's coming from the club. We're seeing it again. But yeah, Cozy, if you had to ask me what kind of players they are, I think it. I mean, it's hard to tell at this point. It looks like they're both Minte and Cozy Dubik, very direct players, players who want to get on the ball, and when they get on the ball, they will run at players and they will dribble past them and they will shoot. You know, it's something we've seen a lot of in in the kind of De Zerbi era with with players like Solly March and the way that he was developed under De Zerbi and the way that Simona Dingra's played that very direct nature as well. The trouble is how we how we're going to fit them all in. I I actually genuinely don't know, but I think that obviously that's a great great problem to have. Um, a couple of standout stars I wanted to talk about. I want to get on to Carlos Belaber because I think he he deserves a mention. Belaber obviously signed. Just a you know just just under a year ago it was the end of the January end of the summer transfer window in 2023 you know after we lost uh, Caicedo and it felt like he really was coming in as the Caicedo replacement and I think there was a lot of expectation because ultimately we didn't really feel that midfield when Alexis and and Caicedo left and and Belaber was perhaps the club's idea of trying to kind of help that situation maybe understanding that he wouldn't be the the replacement immediately. But it looks like now he's a player who really is ready to step up in that midfield position. I think this season is going to be massive for him. Obviously, we were seeing him playing at centre-back on the, on the left side, using his left foot with, with JP to the right of him. And he was brilliant. Obviously, you've got to take into account the level of opposition. But, you know, he's got that pace, which I think is is so, in, in the centre-back position we're talking, was so useful. His ability to recover the ball, intercept, make those tackles. 
It feels like he's playing with a lot of confidence. He played the last, what, 10, 12, 15 games of the season, essentially playing every game after kind of being in and out towards the start of last season. And I think that momentum will take him into next season as a really, really big player. In the same way that we saw it with Caicedo when, you know, he comes back from that loan at Beershaw in, I think, the January um, of of De Zerbi's first season, plays the last kind of half of the season, um, oh, sorry, in the last half of Potter's first season, then comes in, uh, you know, as a, as a main starter in De Zerbi's first full f- first season when he when he takes I've gone get my dates confused but you get what I'm trying to say he played the end of the season under Potter and then when De Zerbi came in he was ready to go as a mainstay for Brighton in that midfield and I think we're going to see the same with uh, Carlos Belaba he looks like a player who's really ready to take the season by the scruff of the neck he's used to the Premier League now and I think him alongside a wafer alongside. Uh, Pascal Gross, Billy Gilmore's. I think that that gives us a lot more options in that midfield. And I think complementing that with kind of, if we're going to be seeing a Yeri around again, I wonder whether he'll be shipped off again. But it feels like suddenly after having a period where our midfield looked really quite light, it looks like it's now getting bolstered quite well. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we bring maybe another midfielder in. Um, obviously, we've got Yel, uh, Malik Yalkule as well. Him, he's come in 18 years old. I imagine he'll get shipped off on loan. But it feels like that midfield has really been addressed in the next few years in terms of that midfield and the profile that we've been looking for in the midfield is looking a lot better. For me, another player who really impressed was actually, um, and I've seen no one really talk about him, but I thought Andrew Moran was really good. I think I think he was playing as a kind of 10 slash kind of centre mid, but he was often kind of drifting deep, taking a really good first touch and immediately popping off. And I think what I really liked his ability to kind of receive the ball in tight spaces turn it around, pop it off and keep that play going. And you could see Herzler on the sidelines really, really applauding that style of play whenever Moran was doing that. I think I've just got, I've got a funny feeling that he might not have a place in this squad this season. Uh, well, you know, not a particularly profound view there, but I just wonder whether the club will maybe sell him this summer, maybe get him off on another loan. But I, I actually think there could be a place for him in this team. Um, of course, he's going to, you know, he, he, I think he's made a couple of appearances in the Premier League, but that physicality is something he's going to have to prove on, improve on in the Premier League. But I, I think there's a space for him. I think in that Hertzler role where it's so much about getting the ball in spaces, getting it direct, you know, into those attacking players, his ability to receive the ball quickly and pop it off quickly, I think could be really, really valuable. I think that could be something that, that hurts. It looked like Herzler really quite liked that. Now, I know he's a bit more of a goal-scoring, number 10 style player, but I thought there was something there which really complemented the way we played. And him and Milner, weirdly, in that first half, there was, I think it was for Minte's goal, when Milner kind of received the ball quickly and popped it into Minte on the right wing, you know, that seems to be a style of what Hurtler wants from his midfield players, getting it out quickly. And it, we saw Moran doing a lot of that and being able to deal with the ball in those difficult spaces. I would love for there to be a place for him. I understand, you know, with players like Weefer um, and Gross and Gilmore and Belaber bursting through, you know, it's going to be a really competitive midfield next season. But I wonder whether there is a place for him because I, I would really, really like to see that. Um, Away from that, obviously, a massive, massive game for Matoma. Uh, just from the fact that, you know, Brighton in Japan, it's all Matoma, Matoma mania. But I think taking, you know, a step back from that as Brighton fans, I think we're we're forgetting it's his first game in the best part of, best part of six months, really. He missed, you know, the end of last season uh, with that injury. And we really did miss him. You know, he started the season really, really well. Obviously, you think back to that goal at Wolves. And the impact he's been able to make, and and he was such a Deserby style player, wasn't he? He was a player that really came to the the fore with Deserby alongside players like Solly March. And I think the fact that we've got him back, taking away from the kind of the fact we were in Japan, I think that's going to be really interesting. You know, that that front line is so competitive now, but Matoma is still a massive, massive part of that. His ability to beat a man, his understanding, I guess, of the Premier League, his. The fact he is that focal point in the team and has been for so long is so good to see him back. And you could you could kind of see him getting into his groove a little bit. I think the tiredness was getting to him a little bit. He had that kind of casual aspect to the way he was playing a little bit. But I think having him back is going to be so important. You know, pretty much in every position now, we've, we've got such depth. You think about players like Nciso coming back as well, it's going to be massive. 
We were also without Cole Rushworth, who is reported had a minor injury. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him because obviously Tom McGill has been confirmed has has gone on a low move to MK Dons. How will that affect our goalkeeping keep, keep makeup next season? You know, Bart Verbruggen looking like he's going to miss the first couple of games of the new season. That means Steele's probably going to start. Where does that leave Carl Rushworth? Would he want to be a number three? Probably not. Would he go out on loan? I think most likely in that we promote kind of a youth team goalkeeper as that third goalkeeper just for the season to go out and, you know, warm up on the pitch, etc. before games. But um, I think it would have been really nice to see Carl Rushworth today. I think hopefully we'll see him on Sunday. Because he he could potentially have a massive, you know, future at this club. It looks like he's a top top goalkeeper, future England international, you know, by all accounts. Um, but whether he whether he's going to ha- find that pathway to break through into the Brighton first team in the next few years, I think, you know, looking quite unlikely with Bart Verbruggen playing so well and being so young, he's probably got that that number one slot nailed down for this season and and hopefully next season as well. Would Carl Rushworth be prepared to wait that long? It seems like Ipswich uh, kind of made an inquiry for him this summer, you know, flatly turned down by Brighton. I think Brighton are very much aware of his his value and what he means to the club. Um, and his, his future he had, maybe he just is the next player on the conveyor belt when someone like Bart Verbruggen leaves the club. He'll he'll probably believe he's ready to start now, obviously making such an impact with the England national setup and doing so well in the championship, being widely regarded as one of the best players at the championship last season. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting dynamic. Do we keep Jason Steele as the number two? Does he get demoted to number three? I think it'd be a role he'd be happy to fulfil. Obviously, there's a lot of clubs looking at uh, British goalkeepers for their number twos in terms of kind of fulfilling that homegrown quota. You think about uh, teams like Arsenal looking for looking for backup goalkeepers. Um, that's a that's a, that's a developing one, and I think that would be quite quite you know quite interesting to see how that develops because I think it feels like there should be a place for him somewhere in this first team this season. But how that will look. Who really knows? Now, in terms of the preseason schedule, obviously we got the the Sunday game against uh, Tokyo Verde, I think that they're called. Then we got the QPR game next Saturday. I'll be at that, and then uh, the final home game at the Amex before we start the season away to Everton in mid August. So uh, you know, many more games to go. We're going to get a lot, a lot more kind of. Uh, talking points and a lot more to, to look at over the next few weeks, uh, the next month or so. Hopefully we're going to see players like Dunk and Gross and, and Gilmore get some more minutes for Bruggen hopefully coming back and Jao Pedro too. We'll be able to see a bit more of them before the season starts but it felt to me like a really, really strong start uh, to the season you know, to the pre-season. We were able to see players like Minte and Cozy Ajubri look really electric, getting at players, taking it out wide, the first or running at them, shooting, getting past players. That front line looking so, so, so bolstered now, looking like something which we can take into this new season with confidence that whether we get injuries, whatever happens, we're going to be so, so much better equipped with specialist players in those positions as opposed, as opposed to having to play kind of players out of position. I think it's really, really looking bright and, and the, the business we've done seems really smart so far. I imagine that's not the end of it. I think we're probably going to continue to bolster, but I think Fabian Herzl were probably thinking, you know, what a fantastic start for him. You know, okay, yes, the opposition, but the players look pretty fit already, to be honest, considering it's the first preseason game. It felt like there was a style of play that we were playing. It wasn't just possession for possession's sake. It felt like possession with a real aim to get it direct and into the wingers fast and get it in behind fast. And players like Steel weren't afraid to go long at times and the and the left back and right back weren't afraid to knock it in behind. A few times it felt like the midfield was playing with a real purpose and there was less of that aimless knocking about the back. It feels like a real identity is already there. I want to see how that grows throughout the preseason, but I think there's been some really, really good signs from Fabian Herzler. So a big one on Sunday. It'll be really interesting to see. Hope you enjoyed the game today and I hope you know we're going to be able to see some some more good results over the next kind of the next three four weeks or so so I will be back after the Tokyo Verdi game to talk through that and all of the latest news in the world of Brighton Nova Albion from that week and uh, hopefully we'll have an away kit to talk about as well which will be good and hopefully some players coming back hopefully we might see someone like Rushworth as well playing we for who knows Webster as well that would be good to see so um in the meantime 
thank you for joining me. I've really, really appreciated you having me on. Uh, a really good game today to enjoy, and let's hope it's a good one on Sunday. Thank you very much for watching, and up the Albion.